Okay, the three, three things I'm looking for in a reigning horse would be um, breeding, confirmation and heart and desire. The thing I put the most emphasis on would be heart and desire because uh, if a horse doesn't have the heart and desire to do the job, you're going to have trouble getting him to do what you need him to do. Over the last 30 years, we've been breeding reining horses to reining horses, looking for horses that can stop and turn and, um, and circle and stay really quite minded. Um, years ago, we used to use cutting breed horses that weren't necessarily bred to do the job and their mental ability may not have been perfect for a reining horse. Um, these days we're looking at horses that have been bred over the years to be reining horses. They love doing it, they love stopping, they love spinning, they love running fast circles and then just coming back to a slow circle. So that's where we go back into heart and desire. Um, those horses have been bred to have the heart and desire to do what we're wanting them to do. When I'm looking for a, a horse for one of my customers or um, someone who's wanting to get into the sport, I'm looking for a horse that has a fair bit of experience. Um, so that person doesn't have to try and learn how to train the horse and learn the manoeuvres and the horse doesn't have to learn the manoeuvres from somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing uh, and they're just learning themselves. Um, when I start riding them, it doesn't take very long to find out whether they have the uh, mind to do the job I'm asking them to do. Uh, the important thing is um, you know, how far they can go, how, what sort of level they're going to go to. Some horses are going to be non-pro horses, intermediate non-pro horses, other horses are going to be open horses. Um, it depends on the horse. I let the horse tell me what it's going to do as far as that's concerned. But generally I start with the breeding and then the confirmation and then we're going to see how much heart and desire, how much want they have to do the various manoeuvres. When you're looking for an open horse, the temperament is really important because you're going to push those horses a little bit, you're going to ask them for a lot. You want them to be able to run and stop, you want them to be able to turn quite fast and then let it all go. If, if they're a bit busy or they're, they, they worry about stuff, then those horses are going to not um, stay mentally relaxed when you ask for something quite quickly and then shut them off again. The front end of a, of a reining horse needs to be quite elegant. Um, it can't be too thick and bulky because when they're doing a spin or rollback, they have to be able to cross um, and be very athletic with their front, front legs. So a horse that's really um, wide in the shoulders is going to have trouble doing that sort of thing. Um, I'm looking for a horse that's around 14 three hands, a compact, um, a nice length of rein, um, nice and clean through the throat latch, a good hip. Um, good stifle, Gaskin muscles, you know, good strength so they can hold their ground in the stop and, a, and an elegant front end. If they can run down there and stop and really use themselves, that's pretty to me. So as far as leg blemishes or, you know, as long as it's not going to affect their performance, it really doesn't worry me. If they've got the heart and desire to go and do what I ask them to do and make it look easy, that's good enough for me. The size of a reining horse is reasonably important. Um, a tall horse will have trouble turning around, it'll want to be a little bit hoppy when it spins. Um, a shorter horse will be more compact and more um, agile. So for me, a horse between 14.2 and 15 hands is ideal. But having said that, I've seen some horses that are quite big that can uh, really do the stuff. So again, pretty is as pretty does. Um, there's no real height restriction, uh, but they've got to be able to do what you're asking them to do. When I'm training my reining horses, I do use a lot of seat. I like to ride my horses up into the bridle and use my leg as a secondary aid, uh, very much like dressage would do. Outside rein for me is really important. I ride inside leg to outside rein, very much like the dressage riders ride, um, because I want my horse to work off the outside rein. Ultimately, when we're steering a reining horse, everything comes from the outside rein. Uh, the inside rein should be loose. So the horse must understand how that outside rein works. So I spend a lot of time working inside leg to outside rein, making sure my horse bends around that, my inside leg um, and is soft to the outside rein. So when I lay the outside rein on his neck, he's not going to brace up, he's not going to resist, he's just going to melt and fold and, and steer away from the outside rein. The 
don't buy a green horse. Number one, do not buy a green horse. Get a horse that is solid in the manoeuvres because the best way to learn is to have a horse that can really do a manoeuvre. If you're running down there and going to ask your horse to stop and you don't know whether it's actually going to happen or not and you brace up, well it's going to be really difficult. You're not going to learn, you're going to start to worry, you're going to start to get a little tense. If, your horse, if you know your horse is going to run down there and stop, you'll get confident with that manoeuvre. Same with the spin and same with lead changes and circles. So really the number one thing is do your research, don't rush, make sure you find the right horse for you, make sure that it's it is solid in all its manoeuvres, doesn't have to be spectacular, but it has to be able to stop every time you say well, it has to be able to turn every time you lay the rein on its neck, and it has to be able to lead change when you press your leg on its side. So those things are really important. Do not, do not, do not get a green horse.